Okay, this chapter is the digestive system. If we scroll down, we can see here the functions of the digestive system, ingestion, digestion, absorption, compaction, and defecation. First step in digestion most of the time is mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. There are the two main kinds of digestion. For example, mechanical digestion is done with your teeth and chemical digestion is done with the acid, for example, that you have in your stomach. General anatomy, we have in here the mouth, then we have the esophagus, stomach, intestines. In addition to that, we have accessory organs to the digestive system in which you find the salivary glands here, liver, and pancreas. If we scroll down, regardless of the area of the digestive system that you are working on, you're going to see that the digestive system has four layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Scrolling down, we're going to have nerves, and these nerves are going to help us move the intestines, the stomach, and all the other organs that need to be moved in the digestive system. And these are different plexuses, different sets of neurons that are going to move that. One of them is going to be the main nerve plexus, and the other one is the our back plexus. So below that, we're going to see here that we have the peritoneum. Peritoneum refers to membranes that are going to cover many of the organs that we have in the digestive system, allowing them to move, but with certain restrictions. One of the membranes that we have is a peritoneum. Most of the organs that are found inside the peritoneum are called intraperitoneal. Some other organs, such as the kidneys, are not covered by the peritoneum, therefore they are called retroperitoneal organs. Also, greater omentum, lesser omentum. The greater omentum is in front of the intestines, behind the abdominal wall. It contains a lot of fat, as you can see here. You have the lesser omentum that communicates the stomach with the liver in the middle. This area right here, this membrane, is called the mesenteries. This maintains the intestines in place. They have certain movement, but they don't move completely away from their initial location. Not only that, it also allows the passage of the blood vessels to provide blood to the intestines. These blood vessels are the mesenteries. So right here, if the colon is the mesenteries that are attached to the colon. That's the mesocolon. Scrolling down. Regulation of the digestive tract. This is done with nerves, my nerves and vagal vagal nerves, and these ones are going to produce reflex that will allow you to move your intestines in the case of, for example, peristalsis. The next topic is the mouth through the esophagus. So in the mouth, you have different structures in there, such as your uvula, your tongue, your palate. So we scroll down the cheek and the lips. Basically, the main job is to move the food uh, close to the teeth so we can actually chew them. And then the tongue is mainly form of muscles. If you look at the tongue, uh, the surface of the tongue has a lot of papillae. Inside the papillae, you have the taste buds. Functions, taste, talk, palate, we have two parts in it. You have the hard bony plate, which is made of bone, and the anterior part is the soft palate, which is mainly skeletal muscle. The palate separates the nasal cavity from your mouth, so it allows us to chew and at the same time breathe. Next item in here is the teeth. The teeth has at the top the crown, the middle is the neck, at the bottom is the root. So we keep scrolling down. Mastication. Mastication is basically digestion. The first part of digestion starts with your teeth. Then we have saliva and salivary glands. The formation of saliva is just a filtration of ions and water from the capillaries that you have in your mouth. The pH of your saliva is approximately neutral and it contains 99% of water. In addition to that, what else we have? Mucus, electrolytes, lysosine, which is an enzyme that destroys bacteria, antibodies such as immunoglobulin A, salivary amylase that is going to help us with the digestion of carbohydrates. Salivary amylase is going to give you chemical digestion. Lingual lipase is an enzyme that begins fat digestion in the mouth, but mainly after the food is swallowed. Which ones are the salivary glands? We have two main kinds, intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic are numerous salivary glands that we have all over our mouth, very, very tiny, and they secrete just a small amount of saliva. Extrinsic salivary glands, we have three. They are going to be parotid, parotid, sublingual, and submandibular. Those are the extrinsic ones, and those are the biggest salivary glands that we have. Right here, parotid glands, sublingual, and submandibular. Okay, salivation, the extrinsic glands, again, are the ones that produce most of the saliva. They are going to produce approximately 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva throughout the day. The pharynx, behind your mouth is oropharynx. After the pharynx, we are going to continue with the esophagus. 
The esophagus has a set of muscles to produce peristalsis to push the food down into your stomach. The bottom of the esophagus, you're going to have an orifice called the cardiac orifice, and you're going to have a sphincter that will stop the contents from your stomach to going back up, and that is going to be the lower esophageal sphincter. We keep scrolling down, swallowing, initiating your mouth. See here in green how the food starts going down from your mouth. That's the oral phase, goes into your pharynx, pharyngeal phase and then goes down into your stomach through the esophageal phase. Keep scrolling down, you have in there the same things that I just mentioned, and then that's it for this item. The next item in this chapter is the stomach, so might as well use this figure. The part of your stomach is the fundus, the area around the connection between the esophagus and the stomach is the cardiac region, the body is the middle, lesser curvature, greater curvature. This is the pyloric region where you have the pyloric sphincter right here. Inside the stomach you have these elevations and grooves, they are called rugae. After the stomach, that's where the small intestine starts. The first part of the small intestine, as you can see here, is the duodenum. Scrolling down. Innervation is given to you by the autonomic nervous system. If you cut the stomach, you're going to see that you have some grooves they are going to be called the gastric pits. Inside these groups, you're going to have these cells, mucus neck cell, parietal cells, mucus cells, chief cells, and G cells. Parietal cells are the ones that produce, for example, the acid that we have in the stomach. Keep scrolling down. Then you have the cells in there again. Gastric secretions, we are going to have acid in the stomach, approximately two to three liters of hydrochloric acid. It's how the acid is formed. You have carbon dioxide in your blood, Carbon dioxide goes into the parietal cells, they mix with water, and you form carbonic acid. The carbonic acid is going to split into bicarbonate and hydrogen. Bicarbonate goes into your blood because it gets exchanged with chloride. Bicarbonate this way, chloride gets pumped the other way around. The hydrogen is pumped into the lumen of the gastric gland. Now you have the hydrogen and the chloride in order to form the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So let's keep scrolling down. Right here you have the formula that you've seen many times before. Functions that you have with the acid, 